Okay, Unit 3, Sum 11. This is an extra credit worksheet. Um, I'll be doing it during the study group. Um, so just some more practice of a lot of the stuff that's on your test, not necessarily all of it. So here are the solutions. You can check those, pause it if you need to. Get the answers in the answer column. A couple of corrections here. I don't know if I got them corrected on the online form version. Okay. So let's try these out. Slope of AB. If this is 150, this has to be 30. You have to add it to 180. This is 60, 30, 60, 90. I think quick way is to be like, all right, this is another little 30, 60, 90. So this is 1, 2, root 3. And the slope of AB is rise over run. So it is up root 3 over 1. So root 3. Otherwise, you could do tangent of 60 degrees, because that would give you opposite over adjacent, which would be rise of run, and be sine of 60 over cosine of 60 equals root 3 over 2 over 1 half equals root 3 over 1 equals root 3. So you have options. Slope of the normal line, just the slope of the normal line. So we need the derivative, 3x squared. And then we're going to plug 2 into it. And this gives you the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the normal line is going to be perpendicular to that. So it's going to be negative 1 12th. That's it. Don't need to do anything else. Just the slope of the normal line. So you got to read these directions carefully in your test. Okay. Connex, uh, find the equation of tangent line of a circle. So this is like ones that we've been doing, except I made this a little harder. But I'm not going to make you do this on the test, but just for old time's sake, you're going to have to complete this square right here so that you get something squared. So this one's not going to be centered at 0, 0. I'm going to add something new here, which is okay as long as it's due to the other side also. Perfect number here is going to be the middle term divided by 2 squared. So that's going to be 25. So it's going to be x plus 5 squared plus y squared equals 169. So the center of the circle is going to be at negative 5, comma 0. So I kind of mess those things up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the new center, negative five, zero. The radius is 13. So I'm just going to five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, I don't know, probably too big for my graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. So there's our circle, whole thing. And then 0, 12 is right here. And we want the equation of the tangent line. So equation of the tangent line. So we're going to draw the radius. And so the slope of the radius is up 12 over 5, positive. 
So the slope of the tangent line is perpendicular at negative 5 twelfths. So the equation is going to be y minus 12 equals negative 5 twelfths x minus 0. That's good enough. Uh, you can write it other ways also. You could do that. You could do this. It's up to you, but that first one's fine. Okay, here we go. Square, square, y squared equals 4 times x squared minus 4. y squared equals 4x squared minus 16. <coughs> if I subtract x squared to the other side, then I'm like, oh, this is a hyperbola because they have a positive and negative different signs. But I got to make this a positive one. So the x squared is actually going to be the positive term of 4 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. So this is a hyperbola, and it is just the bottom of it. So we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, 4, right 2, 1, 2, left 2, 1, 2, Draw a box, light and dashed. It's a hyperbola, so we're going to connect corners of the box with diagonals to get the sign up. So it's going to be a left right hyperbola because positive, the x squareds are positive by the time we get the a positive one on the right, but it's just the bottom half. So it's just this. Graph should look like it's going towards the asymptotes, but not crossing, not going back away later on. Show arrows in the ends. Nice solid dot there to show where it ends. No arrows there. There you go. There's your graph. Okay, let's see some function stuff. So if you poke forward into this, it's uh, 1632 minus 24 times natural log. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as e to the 3 halves, because squared is 1 half, right? Rules of x mod. So this is going to be 8 times natural log and e cancel each other out. Or otherwise, what do you raise e to to get e to 3 halves? 3 halves. So <clears throat> final answer is 12. OK, next one, we're going to plug 3x in. 3x in parentheses squared minus 6 times 3x minus 3 times 2x squared minus 6x. So I'm really careful here. I put everything in parentheses. Distribute. It's going to be 9x squared, 18x squared, not 36. you got to do rules of uh, orders of, order of operations correctly. Uh, minus 6x squared plus 18x. So combining like terms, 12x squared, 12x squared. These guys cancel. <clears throat> there you go. Be careful. Show your work. G of f of x. So that would be natural log is on the outside. 2x squared minus 6x is on the inside. And that needs to be positive. So we're going to factor it. 2x, x minus 3. So x equals 0, x equals 3. We're going to do a line check. Open dots. Test the value. x equals 4, which makes it positive, which is true, false, true. So the domain is negative infinity to 0, union 3 to positive infinity. There you go. All right, next one, determine the piecewise formula. So we're going to write a piecewise function for this. So we're going to find the equation of these two lines. Uh, the slope of, the, of this one is going to be 3 minus negative 3 over 2 minus 0 equals 6 over 2 equals 3. It should come positive. The slope of the other line, since it's perpendicular, is going to be negative 1 third. Uh, the equation of the first line is going to be y equals, since this is the b value, the y-intercept, I would go with slope-intercept form. 
but you could do point slope and then change the slope and stuff from we do want to get it with y by itself for your, for this now you notice how this has an arrow and goes forever to the left but this one doesn't right here it stops so we got to figure out what that value is and address that in our answer. So that's the x-intercept of this graph. Now I haven't written this graph yet, so it's going to be y minus 3 equals negative 1 third x minus 2. So y equals negative 1 third x plus 2 thirds plus 3. The x-intercept is going to be when y equals 0. That's going to be 9. That's going to be 11 thirds. So then we solve for x. So the value of this is 11 comma 0. So we need that. So now when we go to write the equation um, for number 8, we want to write it like this, f of x. And we're not going to put the y's in here. First graph is 3x minus 3, and that is for when uh, x is less than 2. And the other one is negative 1 third x plus 11 thirds. And that is specifically from 2 to 11. Now, it's a solid dot 11, so we need or equals here. There's a solid dot at 2, which could belong to one or the other. Just give it to one. So you could put it here and not here, or put it here and not there. Either way is fine. But notice that this is x is less than 2 because it keeps going forever. This one doesn't. Simon an arrow. Stops. Should be in the definitions. Okay? Which I, I think I might have had the wrong answer originally on the solutions I posted online. But this is right. Okay, number nine. Here's a piece of Y. Find M and B so that it's continuous and differentiable. So continuous is going to be the Y values equal to each other. So we can plug two in. And set them equal to each other. So we're going to force this. Okay, then we got to find the derivative in general. It's going to be 4x cubed, x is less than 2, and m, x is greater than 2. So then we're going to plug 2 into this. 4 times 8 is 32. m equals m. These got to equal. So m equals 32 is actually one of your answers. So we were trying to get a system of equations, and we do, but this is actually a pretty nice version. So we're going to plug 32 in for n. Subtract 64. 58, 48, negative 48. There you go. Okay, um, 10, we're trying to solve these log equations and exponentials. So to solve it, if you have a log equal number, I would change it to exponential form. 10 to the negative third equals x. So x equals one over 10 to the third. So x equals one over one with three zeros after it. Next one, uh, I think we can make the exponents the same on each side, or make the bases the same, and then set the exponents equal to each other, and solve this without a calculator. There you go. Or, you could do natural log of all sides, and say, okay, well, those are canceled, we can move this in front, so we get x minus 3, and what's the natural log of 1? 0. Log of any base of 1 is 0. And you get the same answer. So one of those ways. This one, I rewrite it in exponential. So this 8 to the x equals the square root of 32. Now, <clears throat> at this point, I'd probably try and make these bases be the same. So this is 2 to the third. So the x, this is 2 to the 
fifth to the one half. So two to the three x equals two to the five halves. So we're gonna set the exponents equal to each other because we made the bases the same. And x equals five sixths. No calculator. Next one. For what values of this is this less than zero? So we can say, okay, well, to get rid of the log base four, we're gonna raise both sides to four, right? And then we get two x minus four is less than or equal to four, the zero is one. So then we can solve this. We don't even need a line check. It's a linear inequality. So easy enough. Now, that's your answer. You could write that in interval notation, but you forgot something. Domain. Because the log's notorious for domain issues. The inside has to be greater than zero. So these both have to be true at the same time. Uh, you can draw a line check if you want. Um, this is two and a half. So just open dot of two, arrow of the right. Solve dot at five halves, two and a half, arrow of the left. They gotta both be true, that's where they overlap. So the answer is two to five halves or two and a half, quincy bracket. There you go. practice on here and see 14 the bases between 0 and 1 is this increasing or decreasing well I mean you might just try an example and eh, let's let's put one half in there how would you graph that first of all I'd say that it's that and then I'd say it's that so you could you could draw a graph this is just a regular old exponential now There you go. Is it increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. Okay. Um, fill in the chart. Well, I would be drawing sketches of these. That's going to be the best idea to answer these questions. Super easy once you have a sketch. So parent function, y to the 5x. The minus 2 on the inside moves everything to the right 2. The plus three on the outside moves everything up three. One, two, three. So we're at two comma four. Moves the asymptote up to y equals three. And so the graph looks kind of like that. So it is increasing. It's concave up. The asymptote is y equals three. You have bunch of points on your test like that. Uh, natural log, you might start with y equals e to the x. So that's an easy one to graph. Hopefully you never forget that. And then you just remember that natural log is the inverse. So you flip it across y equals x. Everything x and y switches. Plus two moves it to the right two. <clears throat> So that is increasing concave down asymptotes x equals two. Oh shoot, forgot the negative. So it's actually like this. So it's actually decreasing and it's concave up. Almost missed that. All right. Um, <clears throat> This one, I think of it as negative 2 to the negative x minus 3. So I would start with that, y to equals 2 to the x. And the negative on the inside flips it left or right. And the negative on the outside flips it upside down. And then the minus 3 moves everything down 3. 1, 2, 3. 
equals three. So the graph looks something like that. So it is increasing concave down. The asymptote is y equals three, negative three. Okay, there you go. Uh, investment growing exponentially at 10%, that's the K value. Uh, Inner rate will double in the same time it takes another investment at 20% to quadruple. True or false? Well, same time. We're trying to figure out the time. Let's try it. So we're using Y equals Y naught E to the KT. Oh, I forgot part B, by the way, on number 14 is the graph of the inverse. Well, the inverse of this would look like that. And I would say it is concave down. All right? Let's draw a sketch. Inverse, flip it across y equals x. Okay, 16. So first one's 10% doubling time. So 2y naught equals y naught e to the 0 0.10t. Y naughts cancel out, take the natural log of both sides. T equals 10 natural log 2 for that one. The next one is quadruple. So 4y naught equals y naught e to the this k value is 20% t divide by y not. Take the natural log of both sides. Um, so this is t equals 5 natural log of 4. Now, are those the same? Well, one way to check is you could bring these inside. So the first one is going to be 2 to the 10th, natural log of 2 to the 10th, which is natural log of 2 to the 2nd is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 10, 24. Oh. Okay, the other one. Bring that in to be natural log of 4 to the 5th. Can we figure that out? 4 squared is 16, 64. 64 times 4 is 16 carry the 1. 256 times another 4 is 24 carry the 2. The 20 is 22 carry the 2. The 8 is 10. <gasps> They are the same. It is true. Now, if you just say true or false, I'm not giving you any credit. Even if you say true and it's the right answer, I need support. You gotta show me. Okay, uh, even odd symmetry. Um, making tables for these. A negative A. A cubed minus A. You gotta show this work to get credit for this. Negative A cubed minus negative A. Negative a to the fifth, which gives you negative a cubed plus a over negative a to the fifth. Now, what I think I'm going to do is factor a negative out of the top and a negative out of the bottom. And they're going to cancel. I'm going to get a cubed minus a over a to the fifth. Well, those are the same, which is even symmetry. Y axis symmetry, even symmetry. So that's the kind of work I'm looking for. Negative 5a over a squared minus 6. Negative 5 times negative a. Over negative a squared minus 6 equals positive 5a over positive a squared minus 6. And these are the opposite. So that's origin symmetry. That's odd symmetry. <clears throat> okay. X, A, negative A, Y, A, sine A, A minus A cubed, negative A, sine negative A over negative A minus negative A cubed. It's going to be negative A times uh, sine negative A is negative sine A. That's property, trig property. Negative A 
plus a cubed. Now what I think I'm going to do, the top is going to become a sine a, right? And the bottom, if we factor a negative out, it's going to be a minus a cubed. So these are opposite. So it is odd symmetry. Okay. X a negative a absolute value of a minus two over two plus cosine a. Uh, absolute value negative a minus two over two plus cosine negative a. So show me that first, and then absolute value negative a is the same as the absolute value positive a. You can't get rid of that absolute value. Two plus cosine negative a is the same as cosine of positive a. So this is what we get. This is what we get. They're the same. That is even symmetry. Left side is the same as the right side. It's a flexion across the y-axis. Okay. Uh, got some graphs here. I would sketch it real quick. I feel like that pays off. A negative on the inside flips everything backwards. So it's going to be this. It's getting a little busy. Maybe I'll try and... Just make that solid. Okay. The absolute values make everything positive. So it flips the negative parts up. Positive parts stay the same. Um, I think I messed up. <clears throat> That's going to be over there. It should be this. And then that. So that should be the sharp one. Okay. So, and then this one, this one's a little funky. Um, because, you know, we, we always say we should work from the inside out. Let's try it. The plus two moves everything to the right to, or the left two. So that would be negative four becomes negative six. So that would be this. Okay, and then the absolute value on the inside reflects what's on the right onto the left. So that would just be this. Everything else would disappear, and then the absolute value on the outside would force everything up positive. So based off that, this is what your answer would be. Um, one way to check it <clears throat> is to just try and plug some values into it and see what happens. If you plug... Uh, Four into this, you're getting the value at six, which doesn't exist, right? If you plug two into it, you're getting the value at four, which is this guy. So at two, you're getting that. If you plug zero in, you're getting what's at two there. So that kind of confirms that you're getting that. If you plug in um, negative two, you're getting what's happening at zero. So I don't know, this might be wrong. Let's see. For sure getting that, if you plug in negative two, you're getting what's happening at zero. If you plug in negative one, you're getting what's happening at positive one on the original graph. So I think that's there. And if you plug in negative four, you're getting what's happening at negative two of the original graph. Plug in negative three, you're getting what's happening in negative one. So I think that's that. If you plug in negative six, you're getting what's happening in negative four. So I think this is what we get just from the absolute value. <sighs> okay, hold on. I messed up. If you plug in four, if you plug in zero, you get what's happening at plug in two, you get what's happening at four. If you plug in zero, you get what's happening at two. If you plug in negative two, you get what's happening at zero. If you plug in negative three, you're getting happen what's at positive one. If you plug in negative four, you're getting what's happening at positive two. If you plug in negative five, you're getting what's happening at positive three. So this is this is it. This is it. 
and then they have to evaluate the outside flip everything up. So that one's not right. So I guess the lesson is you need to do the absolute value first and then the move everything left to. So you got to do the absolute value first. And this is what you get. And then you move it to the left too. But I wasn't sure. I kind of went with this approach and it turned out wrong. And I figured it out by just plugging different numbers in and comparing this to see what happens. So a little tricky. Okay, function table. This is the same as g of f of 2, which is g of f f2 is 0. g0 zero is negative 1. Okay, uh, the root of f of g of x means when it equals 0, so x intercepts. So you say, okay, well, when does f equal 0 at 2? When does g equal 2? at 1, x equals 1. So you should have x equals with this answer. And this one's a little funky because this is g of the inverse of f equal to 0. Okay, so first thing is you say, well, when does g equal 0? Uh, negative 2. So then you have to say inverse of x equals negative 2. Um, the inverse of x is x backwards. So we're actually saying this is the same thing as, okay, here's, here's, here's the interesting way. If you take the f of the inverse, they cancel each other out and you get x. But what do we do to one side? You gotta do the other side. So f of negative two is negative one. So it's kind of interesting. That's, I think that's the best way to think of it. It's like, uh, if you get an inverse, get rid of the inverse by taking the other function of it. So there you go. Some more practice. Doesn't necessarily have all the problems out of the year test, but a lot of good practice on it.